In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning. And welcome as we come to celebrate this 15th Sunday of Ordinary Time. I am joined by my brother, Deacon Jack Tierney, an Augustinian who will be ordained a priest a week from Saturday. He was supposed to be ordained on April 25th, but because of the pandemic, his ordination, as so many ordinations and marriages and graduations and baptisms were postponed. So we're so happy that he is going to be ordained a week from Saturday at the St. Rita Shrine in Chicago. So he's joining me today, and we were just actually out of town, so we were not able to do everything in the church of St. Rita. So we are in the community chapel in the friary of St. Rita, which is attached to the church here in Chicago. So we're very happy that you're here, and let us begin, as we always do, by asking God's forgiveness for the times that we have sinned. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Our glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Son of God, Lamb of God, and Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have visited the land and watered it. Greatly have you enriched it. God's water courses are filled. You have prepared the grain. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. Thus have you prepared the land drenching its furrows, breaking up its clods, softening it with showers, blessing its yield. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have crowned the year with your bounty, and your paths overflow with a rich harvest. The untilled meadows overflow with it, and rejoicing close the hills. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The fields are garmented with flocks, and the valleys blanketed with grain. They shout and sing for joy. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of the present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed to us. For creation awaits with eager expectation 
the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. as you would, we boldly proclaim his gospel, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. <clears throat> On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. I can remember as a young boy, when this Halloween day, which for a week or two before, everyone was so excited. And we were waiting to wear our costumes, we were putting together our costumes, and we just couldn't wait. And what did we always do? We prayed for good weather. And we loved it when a Halloween day was on a Saturday or Sunday, because there were more hours to go trick-or-treating. But I can also know that we always knew which houses in the neighborhood were the most generous. I'll never forget, there was a lady that must have worked for Hostess or she went to the Hostess outlet store and got all this stuff because we always got cupcakes and Twinkies and Susie Q's and Ding Dongs and we'd always make sure we'd wait about 25 minutes in between each vision, we'd go back again hoping she wouldn't recognize us. She was so generous. And as little kids, we loved getting this unbelievable treat that was much bigger and better than every other treat that we received. Also, and growing up in my neighborhood, everyone loved when my grandfather, Patrick McCarthy, when he would come to visit. Everyone loved when Grandpa Patrick came by because he always had a handful of change in his pocket. And he would go in and he would say hello to everyone with his little Irish bro and he would hand everyone, all of my little friends, quarters, nickels, dimes, which then they used, saved up, and especially usually ended up getting candy or ice cream. But I always was proud of that that my grandpa, everyone loved when my grandpa came, and I think they loved him because he would give them treats in the sense of money. These two stories, friends, are about generosity. And they're about generosity in little ways. For a lady to give us Twinkies and Ho-Hos and Ding Dongs and Susie Q's, I'm still remembering it 45 years later. A little thing that went a far way. And my grandpa Patrick, God rest his soul, who would come and just have some change and just give it out and would smile and everyone would say, thank you, Mr. McCarthy. A little thing, 
but it showed his generosity. And here I am, remembering it all these decades later. Friends, today's gospel is about generosity. And it's about a generosity that is so freely given. Very much like the hostess snacks and the change given so freely. Jesus tells this parable of the sower and the seed and how some seed lands different places. Some is eaten up by the birds, some grows, but it doesn't go deep because the soil's no good and it dies. Some is thrown on rocky ground and it's strangled by the weeds and it dies. But some lands on fertile ground and it grows and it is fruitful and it produces a fruit 30, 60, 100 fold. But the beauty of this story that Jesus tells us is not just about the seed and where it's landing, but that the sower so generously throws the seed. He is not sitting there putting a little seed here, putting a little seed here, putting a little seed here, but rather he just throws it. You know, seed is expensive. And he just throws it. And he hopefully hopes that it will all take root. Who's the sower, friends? God. God is the sower who so generously throws his love around, hoping that it will take root and grow. What an awesome God we have. How generous he is to throw it and to hope beyond hope that it will go and it will grow. And you know, you and I are the recipients of that generosity. You and I don't deserve the love and the forgiveness and the mercy of Jesus and of his Father and of their spirit. But we don't have to, friends, we don't have to deserve it. You know why? Because they give it so freely and generously to all of us. But then we have to take that seed and we have to let it grow. And at times the seed might be eaten by the bird because we weren't aware. At times our gifts are going into the rocky soil and it's not going anywhere. Or the thorny soil is being choked and that's through sin. But how are we allowing our seed that Jesus, the God the Father and God the Son, God the Holy Spirit give to us? And let it grow and that is the gifts they have given us. And it all began with life, with our baptism, and through our life that we live as faithful Catholics through the celebration of the sacraments. How are you and I saying yes? How are you and I being the recipients of God's generosity? Because Jesus, when he told that story, they understood it because it was a very agricultural society. But you and I know, we might not be farmers, maybe some of you are, but my guess is many are gardeners, and you know what that means. And so friends, how are you using the gifts that Jesus freely gives you? How are you using the talents that he has given simply to you and to no one else? And how are you always saying yes? And as we still continue to struggle with the pandemic, how are we not giving up? And how are we saying yes to Jesus? And how are we doing our best? How are we always using the gift that has been freely given to us to make a difference in our world? I still am so humbled and honored to watch my brother Augustinians here at the St. Rita Parish along with their staff and their wonderful parishioners who are still helping through the food that they give out every week. And many volunteers have come, many who have watched this Mass, you have come to help also, because this happens every Tuesday. Many of you have given money so that we can give the food out by buying the food. But see, that's how you deal with a problem that comes this way. This parish never did that before. They had a, a small pantry that they would give non-perishables. But because they saw a problem, they decided to do something about it. And over 
four to five hundred families each week are being helped. And remember, friends, nobody wants to be in a food line. Nobody does. And so that's an example during this pandemic of how we can help, how we can be a part of things, and how we can share. How good it is that we are here. And how good it is that we are the recipients of Jesus' generosity. The sower who throws so generously the seeds of love, of forgiveness, of mercy, of our talents and our gifts. And as we celebrate the Eucharist, whether here personally or you on TV, through the internet virtually, let us truly know that Jesus is with us and Jesus never leaves us and he gives us everything that we need. Friends, I'll never forget our plotting to get more Hostess cupcakes and Twinkies and Susie Q's and Ho-Ho's because that's how we think as a little child. But how that lady gave joy to us that I'm still remembering it 45 years later. How are you giving joy? And to my grandpa Patrick, who so freely gave of little bits of change to little kids who thought they were receiving little pieces of gold. How are you sharing? How are you making someone else's life different? And then how do we listen to this parable of the sower and the seed. And the sower who generously throws the seed and is not stingy putting the seed in little places, but throws it and hopes that the seed will take root. Friends, that's what this gospel, I think, says to us this week. Let's be grateful for the generosity of Jesus. Let us use the gifts he gave us and let us never give up and always share and take care of others. How good it is that we are here. Friends, how are you the recipients of the seed of love, of mercy and forgiveness that Jesus so freely gives us? Amen. And now let us offer to God our prayers and our petitions. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for all the men and women who lead us in faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of our governmental officials that they may truly work for the betterment of all people, especially during this pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our country, that we may continue to love each other, be patient with each other, understand each other, and never give up on each other. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of our first responders, for our military men and women, for all the nurses, doctors, scientists that are working, all the essential workers, all those behind the scenes that do all the little things to help us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for an increase of vocations of the priest and religious life to all young people that are listening, all those in our family and friends. Let us pray for them and encourage them. And especially we pray in thanksgiving for the vocation of Deacon Jack Tierney and for his up um, upcoming ordination on the 25th of July. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, anyone who is sick with the virus, anyone among our family or friends that need the healing touch of Jesus Christ whether it be in mind, body, or spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our beloved dead, may they always know Jesus forever in heaven, and may they pray for us through the communion of saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us now offer to God our own personal prayer and intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good gracious God, thank you for listening to all the prayers that were voiced aloud, to all those that lie deep in our hearts. And we also, in a special way, remember all those on the prayer list and all those in 
unbelievable need. Anyone today who is feeling alone, know that you are being prayed for at this moment. For all these prayers and intentions, we offer them all to you, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we profess our belief by saying the Nicene Creed, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. <clears throat> Pray to the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all this holy church. Amen. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you. And grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broken and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy, religious, and faithful. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and our Mother of Good Counsel, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Augustine, St. Monica, St. Rita, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen.
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And peace to all of you watching. We're all together, even though we're all apart. Peace. Lamb of God, you take take away away the sins sins of the world. Have mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you take take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take take away away the sins of the world. Bring us us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. See what you believe in, and become what you receive. And our spiritual communion. O my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. The Bible. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Mass this morning. Let us continue to pray for each other, be with each other. I want to thank all who have supported uh, us through the donations to the St. Rita Food Pantry and donations to the Ministry of the Augustinians through my vocation work. And uh, Deacon Jack Tierney is an example of that. I was Jack's vocation director, met him seven years ago, and are so grateful for God's gift to him and his gift to the Augustinians and to us, the church. So at this time, I'm just going to ask Deacon Jack to come and just tell you about how you can participate in his ordination mass a week from Saturday. So the ordination to the priesthood mass will be at 11 a.m. Central Time at St. Rita of High School Shrine Chapel. Unfortunately, uh, the seating capacity and the limitations through the archdiocese is fairly limited. So I ask you to please pray for me and join the live stream on the Augustinian Midwest Augustinian Facebook page. Father Tom will also share this link as he's able to. To any of our young people out there that might be watching this, maybe one day you'll be standing here. Or maybe God's calling you to be a religious sister. Or maybe God's calling you to be a married person and a parent or a dedicated single person. The vocations are all there. He generously gives that vocation out. We have to generously respond. Have a great week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended.
Thanks be to God.